I'd like to also follow protocol and acknowledge um, the Trisha owners whose land we're on today and, and thank those people for their continued struggle um, of survival and um, belonging and culture. Um, my name is Lydia Thorpe. I'm a Brabulong, Kutangalong and Japarang woman from the western and eastern parts of Victoria. And my uncle Robbie Thorpe was meant to be here, but he, he couldn't get here. He's got a rally on today. Um, so I'm flying solo and I'm certainly not going to um, be anything like my Uncle Rob um, or your previous speaker. So I'll do my best and um, update you on what's going on in Victoria. Um, so I'll just, I'll just go straight into it and feel free to ask any questions. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm, I'm not a young person that I keep being referred to and, and shut out of meetings because, you know, young people don't have a place. I'm a mother and a grandmother um, and I've been fighting for our rights, you know, since the day I was born. And um, Uncle Robbie come to my, my school at Fitzroy High when I was 14 and he said, don't learn whitefellas stuff, come with me. And I started working at the Courier Information Centre in Birchard Street, Fitzroy. And, and basically worked for and with my people ever since. Um, so Victoria's talking about a treaty. The Premier came up with this notion of self-determination and promised our people that he'd, he'd allow a conversation around, around self-determination and treaty because we rejected constitutional recognition at a statewide meeting with the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. Um, since his announcement, um, there's been a, a number of statewide meetings and, and, a, and a series of consultations. Um, a interim treaty working group was set up and it started to, I, I was on the interim treaty working group, one of the selected people on the group, along with um, the Federation of Victorian Traditional Owners which were under Native Title Services, um, the Victorian Heritage Council, which is a government appointed body, um, two organisations who depend on government funding, the Koori Youth Council, who also are funded by the state, and then there were meant to be two representatives that um, that group decided that they needed in terms of expertise. So we kind of just agreed, agreed with that. I represented the um, Victorian Traditional Owner Land Justice Group and with me was Jeff Clark. We were the, the two reps from, from our group. We're an unincorporated, unfunded battling body that is just about what Uncle's just been talking about. Um, by the third meeting, six new ministerial appointed individuals came in and, and sat on the interim treaty working group. So what started out to be a little bit okay ended up being an absolute waste of time um, because they're all government appointed by the end of the day and they all had their own agendas. So those six individuals are CEOs of organisations um, and other um, government appointed um, bodies that they're involved in. So we stuck it out for a little while, the Land Justice Group. Um, I think we went to about six meetings and by the sixth meeting, you know, I looked at Jeff and said, we can't do this, this is compromising our cultural integrity, we're selling out, it's a bad process, it's run by the state, it's a bureaucratic process, let's get off. So we went back to our, um, our elders who, were, who govern our our organisation and we debated it for a little while. We said, oh, you know, if we don't um, stay on there, we're not going to know what they're doing and if we go, then, you know, what I'm going to do. So our decision was to go and we wrote a letter to the Premier and said these were all our concerns. Uh, we still haven't got a response from those concerns and now we're on a journey of um, having a treaty a grassroots treaty campaign. Um, we're doing that same way you fellas do it, and that's with no money, 
um, and you know, look for the goodwill of people, mainly white fellas that want to give you money. So we've produced this um, this booklet for our people. We've been going to the ten meetings, or they we're up to number six, I think. Um, meetings around the state to talk about treaty, which is what um, the state government have decided to do with um, Ernst Young. And at a cost of $350,000, they're doing these 10 meetings to go around and, and ask questions of our people of um, what they want to see, not in a treaty, but what they want to see as a rep body to negotiate a treaty. So we're being the thorn in their side and going to these meetings and handing out our booklet. And um, we're basically, I think, um, winning the, the ear of our people because our people haven't seen this information and they've been denied that information through the native title process. And um, the state are basically, they're basically running the, the the process. They're running the show and they're denying us the right to be there. Um, and whilst we were on the Treaty Interim Working Group, I was um, pulled up on code of conduct a number of times and one of those times was giving the Premier our booklet, which has um, 300 clans listed around Victoria. And um, our message was, if you want a treaty in Victoria, you have to talk to and negotiate with 300 clans. You can't negotiate with the rep bodies that you've put on the on the working group. You can't um, negotiate with the traditional owner organisations. You have to deal with every clan in this state. Now, the Treaty Interim Working Group, um, their response to that was, you know, it's just too hard. You know, we can't get around and talk to 300 clans. Um, it's better to go this way. So what our group is doing is we're going around and we're going to talk to as many clans as we possibly can about what's going on. Whilst there are 300 clans in Victoria, there's only 100, oh, just over 100 left, so the, the rest have been wiped out through genocide. Um, but the other clans that have been wiped out still need to be recognised and compensated for what's happened. Um, I won't go into it. That's just our statement about who we are, being a sovereign body. We're not, you know, we're not an organisation. Um, we don't have any hidden agendas. We are who we are, and we just want to give our people the information that they need. And I'd like to actually add to the booklet um, some of um, Uncle Michael's information that he's presented today. Um, yep, just we'll just quickly go through this. But this is what we're handing to our people. We're giving them information about a treaty. We might get to the point where. 300 clans have, um, you know, had the, the right to participate or negotiate and say, we don't actually think a treaty is any good. We don't want a treaty. But at least, you know, we have to have the right to, those clans have to have the right to um, self-determine whether they want to participate or not. Just, just keep it rolling. Um, we're telling our mob, you know, what some of the basic concerns are. Just, just keep it going, sorry. <laughs> um, some of the definitions. This is a, a language map, and it's not an accurate language map for Victoria, but it's certainly one that you know we can use at the moment, and we're getting feedback about um, some of the irregularities on that map. There's always blues about this map, but you know we've got to work with something, and we've got to try and come to some agreement that between ourselves. Um, we explain the, the priory rights, or the first rights. These, are, these things aren't what the government are talking to our people about. The government are going out to our people and they're doing a gammon little workshop with all this glossy um, information. Well, not information, it's just um, one fact sheet on a treaty, one fact sheet on self-determination. It's only what they want to put in there. Um, and they're just putting you in a, in a um, into little tables and they're saying things like, you know, what do you want to see in a rep body? Should, should everybody be inclusive? And our mob, of course, are going to say, 
yes, yes, you know, we're inclusive people. We, we want everyone to be involved, but their interpretation of inclusive is to have your organisations there, your government appointed black fellas there, and, you know, the people that aren't going to do us justice. Um, we go into the free informed prior consent, which again, you know, the state aren't talking to our people about. So this has been given to the state to please photocopy for us because I you know, know what it's like to um, have no money and photocopy things. But they won't do that for us and they're not giving, giving out the information. That's just more about the free. So we also um, have picked out some of the articles in the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Um, that pertain to treaty, but also that pertain to, um, you know, the, the conversations and the information that our people are meant to be getting as part of this process. So they're, they're breaking all the rules. Um, I think that goes on for a couple of pages. A lot of our mob don't even know about the drip, the, the declaration. Um, so this is, you know, a lot of people are seeing this for the first time, yet the decision is meant to be made on December 13 about going forward with the treaty process and having a, a big deadly rep body that deals with it all. Um, that's just, you know, we're already in the constitution, so in terms of recognise, <coughs> doesn't mean anything, won't mean anything, and there's someone talking about that later. Um, we've related it to the Charter of Human Rights, just keep it rolling. Um, some of the legislations that impact us now um, and the other thing that we're talking to our mob about is you know a treaty is like a, a blank, blank canvas and it's it's taking off the layers of that of what's been imposed upon us and that we need to think about you know having a blank canvas what does it mean for you and your family to to live a, a healthy life um, and it's, you know, that's a process in itself because we've been so controlled by these systems that our people's minds are still in that way. So we've got to decolonise our minds and, and think about what's going to make us healthy and strong as blackfellas. Um, so, you know, it's their process won't work and if, if they go ahead with their process, it would be the worst treaty you could ever dream of. But if if we're allowed to continue to, to get to all our 300 clans and, and talk about what does it mean for your family, um, talk about, you know, your connection to your clan, your country and your language, what's going to make you strong as an Aboriginal person, then I think, you know, there might be a little bit of hope for, for treaty. And even if we don't get to the point of a treaty, if every clan was empowered enough to have those conversations and understand what makes them strong, and it's just going back to what you've been talking about, Unc, then I think we won't need a treaty. Um, so we talked about some... We've just put up some principles of a treaty. Um, and this could be available to anyone who wants it in the room. This PowerPoint. Um, some of the functions. Now we're, we're talking about a treaty commission um, and it is white file language, it is white file structure in a, in a um, certain way. Be careful because language is important. Yes and we look this we haven't got it down pat. This is just about this is a working document and, and Uncle Dennis we're looking at your sacred treaty circles that you did way back. That's cool. So we're starting no, no. Okay, so we're starting to talk about that and we're, we're, I think, it's not in this presentation but it's in our next, our updated one that we're working on at the moment um, and we're talking about the treaty, sacred treaty circles so that our old people can sit with our young people and talk about what's important and what could be in a treaty. And So this treaty commission is basically what we put to the state and said, you know, we've got 50,000 black followers in Victoria um, of the 50,000, there's um, 35 language groups and the 300 clans come out of the 35 language groups. So we basically said to them, if we had a male and a female from each language group, it would make 70, um, 70 part-time commissioners in regionally, um, put out regionally, 
Um, we'd have a treaty commission with about nine that sit in Melbourne. But this is what we're just putting out as a, um, a tool for conversation. There's lots of things, there's lots of problems with that. Um, but what the state have put out is let's set up a rep body and let's get all Aboriginal funding that comes to Victoria to go through the rep body. And um, there's so many dangers with a rep body, as we know with um, ATSIC. Yeah, so the state is saying that they want to put it into legislation by um, the next election. It's a, it's a rush process, as per usual, as per government consultations. It's always last minute. It's very disrespectful. None of our old people are getting to these consultations. I was in Shepparton last week. I, I was um, ambushed by a couple of people, um, so I was actually put in danger. And I had dinner with one of the elders the night before, one of the traditional owners um, who lives on the, the Murray River, and she didn't even know about the meeting the next morning. So it's, um, I believe that the way the state are running the process, it's becoming and to start to look like the recognised campaign, you know, and it's being enforced upon us um, in a way that the state want it to, to pan out. Um, so that's that's about it. I think I, I think the rest of the slides um, are just about our clans. What could be in a treaty? This is just to get our people thinking about what the possibilities are and what the um, the legalities are, they're not being told any of this. What's in a treaty or treaties? Um, establish a truth and reconciliation inquiry, um, address sovereignty for First Nations, recognise recognises of past injustice and impacts of the mission of all 35 First Nations and their clans authority and law, recognition of and respect for country, traditions and customs, Reparations for past injustices, dispossession, deculturalisation and dispersal. Futures fund to address our, our quality of life and socio-economic impacts. Dedicated state parliament seats, dedicated local government seats. Establishment of a democratically elected regionally based treaty commission. Um, land rights and land acquisition. Um, fresh water and seawater rights, minerals, stolen gem, repara and reparations, um, treaty review and evaluation procedures, reform of racist laws and constitutions, governance support unit, corruption, nepotism, cronyism. We've got a few problems in Victoria around that. Um, reform of racist laws and constitutions. List of plans and identification, list of authorised plan signatories, and so on. The legal basis for a treaty, I'm not a, no lawyer background. And so this is what, this is ultimately what we're giving to our people to understand and decolonise and connect to clan, country, language and we want all of our mob to go back and identify with, with, with which clans that they belong to. So this is um, Melbourne area, Wurundjeri people, so we're just giving you know an idea of the map area, some of the old, old our, our ancestors, so clans, ancestors and all this information is there available for our people but no one's actually packaged it up the way we have and going out and having yarns about it. So th this goes on for 300 clans, so we don't have to go through it all. But, you know, if we don't prepare our mob and, and strengthen our identity and culture and connection, then, you know, there, there's no point in having a treaty. That's my country, my clans, my ancestors. So that, that's it.